thank you very much, Sonia. Thank you very much, uh, 21CC and the Royal Geographical Society. Um, it's actually quite strange that I've, this is the first time I've actually entered this building, but I live, I've been living here for over 15 years, so first time for everything. Thank you very much for, for you all for attending this, this evening. Um, in addition to what, was, what Sonia was mentioning in the introduction, um, I am the director and founder of Ramadan 10 Project, which is a community-led initiative back in 2011. I'm also the, one of the founding members of Football Beyond Borders, and uh, I'm also a PhD Nuhud scholar, uh, which is a scholarship uh, looking on the integration of Muslims in British society. And my thesis um, at SOAS University of London is looking at uh, the role of Muslim football players as a, a beacon and success of integration within society, um, which actually plays on further with the idea of popular culture and identities as opposed to identity. But that's an academic uh, lecture. We can leave that for tonight. Um, today, we will be focusing on the case studies of uh, RTP, as we call Ramadan 10 Project, and Football Beyond Borders. But I'd like to first off and start off with the, the term of winning the hearts and minds. And that's often embedded in discussions and conversations and policies of, of nations and states, um, particularly in foreign policy surrounding diplomacy, community cohesion, mutual understanding, respect for one another, and creating a sense of uh, belonging, lo loyalty and confidence in citizenship and upholding respective rights, laws, duties and responsibilities. The aims of winning the, the support of a nation, of a people, of a community through the means of mutual exchange, consultation and engagement and dialogue has never been more apparent today. And in order to achieve the ends of winning hearts and minds, the means must not adopt one of fear, enmity, discord, but rather met with diplomatic, gracious and conciliatory action and understanding of the other. Often politicized terms such as the West, the Near East, or the Middle East, the Islamic world, and Europe are used to define and or prescribe and represent an identity, culture, cultures, languages, or language, and faiths. However, we have to ask ourselves, and this is, you know, we're very well actually moving on with um, uh, Ted's uh, uh, presentation. We're looking at the idea that are these labels still valid today? And what I mean is, what is Islamic about the Islamic world? And what is European about the EU? And these are the questions we should be asking ourselves. Living together and building a truly multicultural society does not mean merely being satisfied with the existence of communities of faith or juxtaposed cultures whose members ignore each other, never meet or remain enclosed within their own universe of symbolic reference points. Nothing should be stranger in our way of living and allowing for a mutual exchange of ideas between our communities than a model of parallel lives, shielded beneath an illusion which in reality is of mutual ignorance. And I'd like to refer to a comment by one of the volunteers at the project, which truly epitomizes our topic today of integration. Without a home, money, and the slightest idea about how I was going to be able to fast during the most important Islamic months of the year, Ramadan, in my first summer in the UK, I was waiting for some divine guidance, no matter how small, so as to revive my spirits in a particular point in my life. I waited. I walked around, came back, looked up to the sky, and still there was nothing. As I was about to get up and leave, the sign I was waiting for came, and I hadn't even realized it. Then a classmate, an acquaintance, an RTP committee member, walked up to me and asked, what are you doing here? I said, nothing, just trying to sort out my life. He smiled and replied, come and join us for Ramadan. We volunteer every day here, and you can come and feel the good vibes with us. Trust me, you will love it. With nothing better to do that day, I said, I'm in. After trying to convince my friend all night, we finally made it to the Ramadan 10 Projects Garden for their open iftar. You know what? At least you did something good during Ramadan. Little did we know that from that day onwards, both our lives would change forever. 
we gained far more than your typical volunteering experience. By the end of the month, we, had a better, we, had a, we both had a job, a roof over our heads, and more importantly, we had rediscovered our identity. Two young men on the verge of giving up had managed within a month to achieve more than we had done all year. Today, sitting on the same bench where this story all began, I would suggest that if you are looking for a friend, a nice conversation, a charitable deed, a lesson in humility, or a model for leadership, then come join us at Ramadan Tent Projects Open Iftar. You might not find us at a door with fluorescent jackets, but you'll definitely find us somewhere amongst the hundreds of strangers, volunteers, and guests, breaking fast together in the spirit of compassion and peace. A true blessing that everyone should experience to see what is shown, what is not shown, rather, on TV, what is not heard on the radio, and what is not written in newspapers, what Islam, Muslims, and Ramadan are really about. And this is a comment from one of the volunteers who joined us back in 2011 and is now a part of a committee member. But from that very short story and that example, it comes to give us an insight into what identity is and what integration is and what does the sense of belonging mean. In one of the slides you just saw earlier, the sense of belonging to a place that is changing. Eric Erickson has written in his definition of identities. Identity is ever evolving. We never have one identity. The, fact, the mere fact that you learn a new language, your identity is changing. The mere fact that you are learning how to cook, how to play an instrument, your identity is changing. Therefore, belonging to a place is also changing. This wider, deeper, and more subtle understanding has naturally helped all people in society to open up towards each other including towards Muslims, and to understand that they do not, are not so very different or strange when judged by their values and hopes. A truly multicultural society cannot exist without an education in the complexity of what shapes us and in the common dimensions that we share with others, regardless of our differences. And in human societies, minds or hearts are the main arena. If we believe that we are governed by feelings as much as by thoughts, then truly unity and diversity is achievable through wisdom, humility, respect, dialogue, and social justice. And that is true of both men and women. Thank you very much. <clears throat>